Cool. Okay, that's rolling. Move my camera thing. Don't yeah, just yeah. And I'm rolling here too. Okay. All right. I think just just first of all, uh, let's get thoughts on today. Let's talk about today. So just uh, thoughts touring the facility. What'd you think? Well, first of all, when you walk in here, you just feel the caring and the compassion and the empathy that just that comes from the walls. I mean, every single thing they've, they've left, no, um, nothing behind. The staff who works here, they've thought of every way to make people feel comfortable, welcome, to inform them, and to help families. Families take this journey through cancer or chronic disease. It's not just the person who has it. It's their kids, their parents, their cousins, sometimes their friends. We go through it together. So this is a place that allows people to be together and go through on that journey to help the person who is uh, uh, fighting the fight. You know. it, it's a long journey. It's a hard journey. Lifetime for some people. Based on that, what did you hear in, in the room today during that roundtable discussion? Kind of what's your takeaway from, from in there? Well, you think about um, family that suffers from leukemia, bone marrow transplant, teenage kids going to suffer from the repercussions of that disease, um, the side effects, probably for the rest of his life. Thank goodness, in remission, we have Lyme disease. Same thing, we suffer through that. So building up these networks of care and compassion, so when your kid is going through, I mean, my mom's in treatment again. I said, there's no one to help me with my home. Or the frustration, mom can't come to my game, or mom or dad, because there's too many germs at school. So how do we send somebody with a FaceTime and, and video that game, whatever, that, you know, sports game. And so making lives as normal as you can for people going through that is really important. And also helping them find the resources they need struggle and support their families too. I'll be like you can't even work. Drug prices, I'll tell you that uh, what you really hear is about the problem of prescription drug prices. I've introduced some legislation this past week that's going to cap uh, excuse me, prescription drug prices at $250 uh, for a person or $500 for a family. And the kid that's here with Lyme disease, um, $1,700 a month for her. Just basic prescriptions, not to mention if she has a relapse. Same thing when you think about the care for the child with cancer and some that are going to be uh, surviving chronic disease. And so I've introduced a resolution that's going to put us, uh, let, allow Congress to sign on to a federal lawsuit that's going to protect the constitutionality of the Affordable Care Act's protections for pre existing conditions. Because the last thing we want to do is sentence any of these people to a lifetime of not being able to get insurance or not being able to get affordable insurance. You think about these kids with a cancer diagnosis, if they survive and it's a lifetime of no medication or no insurance, how long will their life be? What will we do? And so those two bills I've introduced in the last few weeks, I believe are a good step towards trying to put the protections we need for families all across this country that suffer and struggle every day. And that's transition to what I was going to ask next yeah. is this seems to be kind of if not ground zero when you talk about treatment at a hospital or something like yeah. that ground zero on the back end uh, of your argument of, of why the Affordable Care Act needs to stay in place and why uh, not yeah. just your argument of course but the, the argument of why it should stay in place. Well here's the thing did your mother ever tell you if you don't have your health you don't have anything so we know that being healthy is, is the most important thing to all of us all the money in the world can't save you if there's not cures for diseases or if you uh, can't get things done. And so we need to protect people. Those 10 essential health benefits, the pre-existing uh, uh, exist, uh, conditions, the prescription drug prices, it's really important. Preventative care. Imagine that you get a test, you find out you had a tumor or cancer or whatever it is. Better for me to get it treated before you find it. Better for me to give you blood pressure medicine instead of you having a stroke. Those 10 essential benefits keep us healthy, they save us money, and they protect our loved ones from getting sicker or even passing away. The administration has been pushing, uh, expanding the short-term health care plans. Thoughts on that? Yes. I know that that's been working its way through the process in Washington. 
That's just another way they're trying to undermine and sabotage Americans' health. You give someone a junk plan, it's so expensive. Maybe they, first of all, can't afford it. And what does it really cover? So are they really getting anything? If, it, if it's a $50,000 deductible and you have leukemia and you can't work, you can't meet the deductible. So the insurance is just giving you nothing. If I give you a coupon for something that costs $500 and I give you a $250 coupon, if you didn't have the other $250, the coupon is worthless. That's what these junk plans are. And it's just another way for them to undermine the safety, health, and welfare of Americans. I want to talk different policy off yeah. of health care. Uh, the Trump administration and the separate family separation yeah. policy. We know of more and more families now, at least the adult part of the family that have been detained here in Nevada, yes. children or elsewhere. Yeah. Have you heard from uh, from people calling your office asking for help that are here in Nevada trying to, to reunite with their kids? Uh, yeah, my office is the, has been in contact with ICE, with the Henderson Detention Center and others. I myself went down to the border uh, Paso Juarez and visited a detention center, uh, not a uh, camp, excuse me, a camp for um, minors or minor boys separated from their families and turning over. So what I want to say about that is the uncertainty of when they're going to be reunited, what's going to happen to them, uh, the capacity for them to have legal representation and services. It all matters, and this crisis is created by the president, and he can change it in an instant. So we don't need to continue to have these families separated. What we need to do is have this administration look at doing comprehensive immigration reform and stop with this reckless policies that tear families apart needlessly. He started it, he can stop it. Has your office been able to try to at least get an idea of how many uh, people are detained here or how many would qualify into that category that have been separated or actually here in, in our state? You know what, we're working on getting that information. We just found out the other day that there were some families here. So uh, we're trying to obtain the status of the people that are here, whether they had children, whether they came alone, and uh, we're putting together that report. It seems to be with uh, uh, the way this has happened, there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of lost information, so we want to be sure before I say anything, that we have the accurate record and accurate representation of what's going on here in Nevada and, of course, across the country. Republicans are pushing to try to have hearings for Judge Kavanaugh to take the bench, yeah. potentially in the Supreme Court, uh, before the election. Uh, if the election goes your way, as a seated senator, you would have the opportunity to ask those questions if it happened then. So what questions do you have now that you would ask him if you were a senator? Well, I can tell you I have real concerns about his views. Uh, and his opinions in the past. I have concerns about his opinions on Roe versus Wade and women's right to choose it. It's the law of the land since the 1970s. I have concerns about his opinions on Napa Mountain. I have concerns about his opinions on the executive branch. As far as I'm concerned, no one is above the law. We need to be sure that we uh, follow these investigations wherever they lead because the, the dignity and decency of our democracy may be at stake and bad actors are trying to us, we need to be sure that we're taking care of it in our elections. So I would like to ask him some of those questions. Yucca Mount has been a unifying factor for our delegation in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Heller still puts his support for Judge mm -hmm. Kavanaugh despite uh, mm -hmm. Kavanaugh's previous ruling. Should that have been a deal breaker in your opinion? You know, I have real issues with it. I think that Senator Heller should have asked the difficult questions about it because this affects Nevada families, Nevada businesses. And not even just Nevada. How about the 40 some states that that nuclear waste is going to travel through by truck or by train? It's going to take about 50 years to move all that nuclear waste here at three loads a week. There's a lot of things to consider. I don't believe Senator Heller did his due diligence by asking questions that Nevada talked the answer to. Problem Solvers Caucus? Oh, you I. Join that. What yeah. are some of the things that you're working on that uh, possibly have a chance of? making it to the president's desk. I will tell you one of the best things I ever did was become uh, one of the founding members of the Problem Solvers Caucus. We are a bipartisan caucus trying very hard to put forth position papers on issues that we all agree on. I'm on the infrastructure task force trying to talk about how we fix America's potholes, net neutrality, rural broadband, ports, roads and bridges, really important things that we agree on. How do we move that forward? And so Problem Solvers, we've done a great uh, a position paper. I think we're going to try to put some legislation behind it. It's called Break the Gridlock. So 
what happens in a break the gridlock is we want to be sure is that every member has an opportunity for a bill to come to the floor for a vote. Or that if a bill has so many sponsors, bipartisan sponsors, it comes to the floor to the vote. And we're just not locked up because one speaker or one group can hold something hostage. So those are some of the things in the new Break the Gridlock Plan. I'm really proud of that. I hope to continue that work when I go, uh, go to the Senate. I think finally, uh, it's, it's a state issue for voters, not necessarily a federal issue, but the Energy Choice Initiative. We've heard some of the federal delegation weigh in. Adina Titus has come out as a no against question three. Have, have you formed an opinion on that? Is that something that you've thought about or want to weigh in on? Well, I want to tell you, we've been getting research on it every day, but I have real concerns about it. And I'm going to tell you why. Of course, we need more access to wide varieties of energy, but we also have to protect consumers and what they're paying in their monthly electric bill. So I'm trying to put together how that's really going to balance, look at what's happened in other states and what people are saying here. So I'm still trying to decide how I feel about it, but I do have real concerns. We need better access, broader access, but I want to be sure that consumers are protected. Well, Representative, I know that uh, you are very busy, even on your time back here. Thank you yeah. so much for taking some Thank time you. with us. It's really been a pleasure. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank you. I don't know what the Thank next you. stop is, but... Uh, on you go. Wait, wait, wait. I, I got gotcha, you. Yeah. I don't want to break it. <laughs> Let me get untethered myself. Okay. Great stuff. There we go. Perfect. I don't know what's coming. Next stop is lunch. They got feed water in the clinic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for taking some time. Yeah. Do you know what time it's going to air? Um, they'll we'll put a few sound bites tonight and we'll use. The interview on the show. And oh, okay. Then, um, um, if you want the actual yeah, text yeah, of those bills, yeah, yeah. Get the I can send you the background, the background, sure. the bill yeah. number, Appreciate so then you have, absolutely, you know, yeah. the actual language. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to have. yeah. All right. Thanks Thank so much, Patrick. Good to yeah. see you good again. Good to see you too. Pleasure Great meeting you. Great to meet you. you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. I don't know if you met Jeff Gordon, our president. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. See you on TV a few times. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. that we can try to. Let more people know about what's happening. This is That's what we need to do. Is just get the word out. We're not charging for these services, so that more people know what we're doing. Kirsten Joyce was just here what a couple yeah. months ago, oh, and yes. she came up to camp. She came up to camp for our, well, our kids, kids. Just, uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, good, good. She came up and yeah. presented a presented an award to one of our volunteers. Yeah, Wonderful. yeah and she was just great. She, we, Kirsten's just wonderful. But uh, anyway, so. It's always yeah, a highlight and, when I get to sit with her in the morning when I fill in. Absolutely. Well, if you need to ever, you know, uh, talk about, you know, Congresswoman, visit here or anything else, or energy wise, let us know. Yeah, let me leave you my car so you have my. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Patrick. Right. Absolutely. That sounds wonderful. Oh, I mean, and if you need any interviews or any support, interviews or information, then I'll be gentle. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, you're welcome. Have a great day. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about yeah, because there is is, there are always, I think, opportunities to weigh in issues that come up. So we would love to include you. Okay. And, and as you see from Mike, talking mm -hmm. to Mike, you know, he didn't know about mm -hmm. this place. I mean, we get it out the best we can. Sure. Yeah. But by you right letting people, no, yeah, yeah, I, I've seen by you letting people front, know that, right. absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Perfect. As things come up as well, if we, if we have ideas or things that come up, please let me know. Okay. We will. So that we can yes. pitch the story. I love it. Thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Well, I'm going to head out. I have another event to go to, okay. but thank you so much for everything. Of course you do, Isaiah. I really, really, really Always appreciate it. I know. <laughs> I'm sure we'll run into each other sometime. We will. We will. Yes. Yes, I definitely want to. Yes. I would love to. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then if we, if we can get the cards yeah. to attend, yeah, so if we can get in as early as possible, we could definitely make it work. Yeah. Well, I'll be really nervous, but it's going to be great. I'll just make sure that I haven't seen the right definitely. Perfect. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you. You guys have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please let me know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to eight and then I'll be back at the twentieth. So I'm sure it's gonna be a little bit of 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 a little
Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, um, I'm not there for the show Saturday. Oh, it's a Saturday? Okay. Saturday afternoon. Okay. Okay. But we'll have it. I rolled in there with a Sunday. Okay. 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 Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you too. Bye-bye.